What's going on guys? Welcome back to Casey Kayak Fishing. For those of you that don't know, my name is Kyle and this is part two of building our Old Town Sportsman PDL 120. So in part one, we did the aluminum rudder upgrade from Navarre Kayak Fishing, the rudder handle from Navarre Kayak Fishing as well, as well as installed some rudder cable adjustment nuts from Yak Hobby. Once again, your time is important to us. We're gonna try and keep this video to around 20 minutes. See how much stuff we can bang out in that amount of time. Let's get it. At the very back, we're gonna do the Navarre power pole cover, which we have our Scotty rescue pole mounted to our flag pole. Super easy change out. We're just gonna pop out these factory screws. It's just a Phillips head screwdriver. There's four of them. Like that. And the Navarre plate comes with longer bolts. So you don't have to worry about going and getting getting new bolts. Tighten one down there. Now, depending on what you guys are mounting back here, I think it's made for a power pole cover or a power pole. We're just doing a flag pole off of here. So we don't need to go crazy on torquing these screws down. Super easy upgrade for anybody who wanted to add some accessories on here without drilling holes into your kayak. Okay, done. So when you guys do pick up your new kayak from Old Town, it comes with this little tackle box. Inside you're gonna have your owner's manual. Owner's manual right there. Make sure you hang on to that because that does have your serial number on it in case you need to make a warranty claim like we did. Let's install the paddle holder. Why not? We're building a boat. Simple install. You're gonna wanna have your strap on the back up like that. Put it through. That one started. Snug that up. Doesn't have to be crazy tight. There we go. Another piece on. We're rocking and rolling today. Okay guys, next we're gonna get rid of this forward facing rod holder. I absolutely hate it. It puts the rod out right here, which is right in the way of my seat. So I don't like that. Take this thing out, get rid of it. We're replacing it with the uh, Navarre. We have lots of Navarre parts on here, Navarre kayak fishing. And this is the rod replacement cover, rod tube replacement cover, sorry. Doesn't have to be crazy tight. You don't want to strip out those factory holes. I'll show you guys why I love this thing so much. It has a track in it. Put anything you want on it, any track mounted rod holders. I like the Yak Attack AR tube. One of the nice things about this is now you can change your position of your rod. It's not in the way anymore. You can spin it back. You can have another rear facing rod holder if you want. A net or a gaff staging area. One of the most favorite upgrades on the boat. What do we want to do next? Ooh, I know, I know, I know. The rear facing rod holders. I'm gonna pop this screw out and we are gonna install the rod tube covers from Navarre Kayak Fishing as well. Phillips head screwdriver. Take that one out. And we'll put that one in. One of the beauty things about this little setup is, for us anyways, when we're hosing down our boats, we don't have to worry about water getting in the rod tubes and flipping the boat over to get it out. Or if you're not using these when you're out on the water, throw a cap in there or throw the plug in there. It'll keep your rod tubes dry. Next thing we're doing is getting rid of this factory old town handle. 
we're gonna swap it out with a Navarre kayak fishing handle. And the beauty about these handles is they do have a hole right through and it'll take a wide variety of T-track and ball mounts. This is the one for the other side that we mounted our fish finder on. As you can see, T-bolt through there with a Scotty ball mount. I just like having the ability to put different accessories wherever I want. This handle doesn't allow for that, so it's gone. What we're gonna do is flathead screwdriver in there, pop those out. On the other side, pop those out like that. Four Phillips head screws. Two of them have their little brass inserts. Two are just into the hull of the boat. You wanna save your screws from this because the handle doesn't come with replacement ones. Just snug at first till you get all four of them in. Just tighten it up. These things don't need to be cranked down like crazy. There we go. Two more to do. Up here at the bow of the boat. Same thing, flathead screwdriver. Pop that out. Wow. Holy sh... Oh, you hear that? Wow. <sighs> Old Town's gonna have to warranty my shoulder after that one. My goodness. Here's your Navarre kayak fishing replacement handle on the website too, you guys. If you are looking at replacing the bow one, um, it is a different handle shape from the side handles. So just something to be aware of when you're putting your order in on their site. There we go, just snug. And last but not least, why not, since we're changing all of them anyways. So this one we already have our Scotty ball mount attached to. We go just snug them up so they're tight there is nothing on this boat that needs to be cranked down crazy tight i just wanted to say there's nothing wrong with the factory handles that come on the old town sportsman pdl 120 the reason that we wanted to switch them out is having the ability to mount things to the handles up front that one we use our fish finder for and this one I'm thinking about possibly using for a camera boom to get that over the shoulder look. So if you need to mount stuff, great option. If not, stock handles are completely fine too. Okay, next, let's get rid of these factory plastic tracks and replace them with some aluminum ones. So these tracks gotta go for us. Mounting downriggers off of here, mounting rod holders, getting big strikes from big fish. We needed something a little bit more sturdy to handle the weight. These aluminum rails are from Pacific Yak Angler. We're gonna clean them up though. If there is any question about what salt water does, just eats everything over time. 
So let's clean them up and get them installed. We don't need scars just to know we're human. We can let the world just tell us and light ourselves up when we're out of luck. And you can see the amount of flex in that versus that. It takes a lot more force. But also too, if you use a single T-bolt in there, the risk of it opening up and pulling out is a lot more than these. This is basically the same thing, guys. We're using the exact same holes. No backing plate needed. Line these up with the factory holes. I'm just getting all these started. And the tracks, if you order them, come with an instruction book on how to tighten them. Tighten them down basically like you're tightening a lug nuts on a tire. You wanna use that crisscross pattern, not around the perimeter. Same thing on this side, guys, just a Phillips head screwdriver. Make sure you save your screws because we're going to reuse them with the new aluminum tracks. If you guys need to, you can take a knife. Be careful with it, as I'm known to be. Just take off those high spots from the factory screws. Then your track will sit flat. That one's okay. Huh. Look at that. Didn't even cut myself. When you guys do this too, make sure that the Pacific Yak Angler stamp is facing the outside so then everybody knows whose tracks they are. Support local. Make sure to not go too tight, because you will round out the holes in the plastic. That's it. While we're here, we might as well get rid of this. This one by two guys is here for transport only, just to keep the lateral support of the hull. So you wanna take these Phillips head screws out. And these screws here that are taped to the board, don't lose those. Get rid of the board. And you're replacing these down in that same hole. Again, you don't have to go super tight with them. All the weight is gonna be down from the seat. There we go. Save these for whatever you want. Get rid of that. Oh, do I want to get into this right now? Yeah, why not? Okay, let's install the fish finder. So for our fish finder install, we need to drill some pretty big holes in the boat to accommodate our wilderness systems through haul kits. Um, first one is going to be in this scupper area here. That'll be just in front of the drive so our transducer wire can come up nice and hidden into the bow hatch. Second hole will be under the seat here, pretty much directly in line with where our fish finder is gonna be mounted. A lot of people are gonna be nervous about drilling holes into a brand new kayak. Trust me though, once you start doing it, there's no other way to do it. Hiding the wires, having them all come out nice and clean is a lot better than having cables dragging everywhere. So just drill the hole. So like I said, inch and three inch, inch and three eighths hole 
we need to drill in here. Um, I'm using a spade bit. You can use a hole saw if you want, whatever you have. Just make sure it's inch and three eighths if you're using the Wilderness Systems through hole kit. So what I like to do, I'm eyeballing center. Right until the start of the actual bit itself. So I'm just giving myself a pilot hole. As you can see, the drill is on an angle, so we don't want an uh, oval hole to be drilled. We want it nice and straight, a straight circle. So once that pilot hole is drilled, I'm coming around to the back side because that is a flat side. And I'm trying to do it as straight as possible. Boom, beautiful. I'm gonna try and do this as best I can so that you guys can see it. We are using, well, first of all, we use Garmin Striker plus fours as our fish finder. And we are using the Navarre Kayak Fishing transducer scupper mount. It's just a bolt and a rod that goes through there. This sits on top, you tighten it down, it is, a genius little system. It's going to be interesting because I kind of got all this rigged up already from my last kayak. Power cord comes up from the bottom. Gasket needs to be on the outside, so make sure you go through that. And then we're going inside the hole and pulling all that cable through. We'll get this installed and then we'll sort out all the mess of wires later. So now we're gonna pull this up. And that is our transducer attached to there. See this little puck? There's a little slot there for your cable to go through. And a wing nut on top. And you just tighten that down. Make sure no cables are pinched anywhere or anything like that. Perfect. Okay. Pull the rest of this through here. Here's your other piece. And there is a rubber grommet. There it is. A rubber grommet, I use the ones with two holes in it, and then I just marine silicone the one hole up because it seems to fit the wire the best. I'm having a hard time filming this so that you guys can see what I'm talking about. So hopefully you can see that you got your rubber grommet on there, you got your gasket on there. Here's your actual through haul kit. That just slides over top of the grommet you're gonna push it all the way to the front. Like so. Through haul kit goes through the gasket and into the hull or the bow hatch. Next you have this locking ring that threads on from the back side. So you gotta pull all these wires out again. It's got two tabs on it. You want the flat part against the inside of the hull of the kayak. Let's see if you guys can see that. So we're through there. And then it just screws on to the back side of here. This is a little bit more challenging. You definitely need want to make sure if you're using these through hull kits that you have access to get your hand in there and thread it on. It's not as easy as some of them, but they are an extremely solid through all kit. We've never had any leaking with them either. Snug that up, make sure it compresses that gasket, just finger tight, you don't need to crank it, but that's it, first hole done. Okay guys, so for where the power cables are gonna come out and actually attach to our fish finder, these are your chair rails. I know I want to be somewhere 
around there underneath the seat. Um, just because I've done this before, I know kind of where I want it. If you haven't done this before, best idea is to get your fish finder set up and figure out exactly, put your chair on, figure out exactly where you want this cable to come out. For me, it's nice and out of the way. It comes up, kind of weaves through the chair. I'll show you guys when it's all set up, but for me, through haul kit's gonna be back there. One thing I forgot to mention too, if you are doing this for the first time, make sure in behind there, take your hand, reach in there, make sure there's nothing that you're gonna hit. For us, I know that the rudder cables and everything are back that way. There's no screws I'm gonna hit here. I mean, really the whole side of the kayak is pretty much wide open, so here goes nothing. So for us, our cables are gonna come out here and we are running our 12 volt, 10 amp hour battery underneath the seat in the hatch there. In the front is for our Dakota Lithium Power Box 10, which powers our GoPro. So two options, you guys can run your power in the front hatch or the one under the seat. So this time we'll be opposite. We want, oops. We want the locking ring to sit flat on the inside. So it needs to go over top of these cables first. And we'll stuff all these wires inside the kayak. We're gonna feed this down the side of the kayak. Just pushing those wires in there until we can grab it from the hatch under the seat. And reaching back through there, you should be able to grab your power cables and get them through your hole in your through hole kit and make sure you grab that locking ring as well. So we got a rubber gasket, we can slide that over our wires. Once again, you want to make sure that their flat part is to the hull of the kayak. There, just like that. This guy slides over top. You're gonna push that grommet in all the way to the front of the through hole. Make sure it's nice and snug. Make sure it fits nicely in your gasket. Remember for this through hole kit, you wanna make sure that you can reach wherever you're attaching it to because you have to screw in the back side of it. Okay, that's tight. There we go. So our power cables come up here. They'll attach to our fish finder. So last but not least, we want to reach inside, grab our power cable and pull that through to this opening here and that'll attach to our battery inside our hatch. This is a Scotty ball mount on our Navarre. Handle replacement. I usually have it something like that. Scotty gearhead, Scotty universal mounting plate for your fish finders. We've got our Garmin Striker Plus 4, which we mount here. Little cover. That's kind of how it sits, but we like this setup because it is movable. You can move it around wherever you want. And inside the hatch, Dakota Lithium 12 volt 10 amp hour battery. You guys can mount this, oops, however you want inside the hull. Honestly, we just use a piece of belt Velcro. There's a flat spot right there. It attaches to, and if we did everything right, it should turn on. Easy, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. There's your through haul, comes up, 
behind the seat and that's just some wire loom to protect your cables from knives and hooks and stuff like that and then into the back of the Garmin Striker plus four on the VAR kayak handle. All right guys, that's a wrap. We got fish finder installed. We got the pedal drive back in, downriggers on, aluminum tracks replaced, the handles, the rod tubes, the aluminum rudder. That's it for this series. I'm sure you guys are tired of hearing me talk. This boat's basically a wrap. The only thing left to do is to put on a keel guard which I'm not going to bore you guys with that. It's really just double-sided tape, stick it on there, and then silicone around the outside. There's not much to it. Thank you guys so much for watching. That's a wrap on this build-a-boat project of ours for the hull replacement. Don't forget, down below, like, share, comment, subscribe. Appreciate all you guys' support. Till next time, catch you on the next one.